All right, Greek mythology, creation myth, go. In the beginning, there's chaos. No, not that chaos. Chaos is basically the first lazy millennial who just sits around all day in his mom's basement and doesn't really have a job or do anything. Only Chaos is also his own mom, so he's just kind of sitting around doing his own thing. So Chaos is in charge, except he's essentially just a homeless squatter who also happens to be the land that he's squatting on. Side note, there's another version of this story where Nyx is the progenitor, and she lays an egg, and inside the egg is Chaos. But that's not the Hesiod version of the story, so we're not going to use it. So Chaos is just kind of sitting around in the void, and he's really bored and lonely, and he's also sort of horny because he has a dick, and thus he needs to put it in things. That's a theme in Greek mythology, pay attention to it. So anyway, Chaos is sitting around and he's like, man, I need a wife or a side chick or something. And so boom, Nyx is created, and this is less like God creating Eve, and more like drawing a face on a volleyball and making it your wife. So the Nyx and Chaos get down to banging like the hot young divinities that they are, and out pops Erebus. Hooray, said Chaos, who uh, now had a wife and a son, and was presumably very happy. Man, I hope this means I'm going to be relevant and not disappear from the story entirely. Except then Nyx and Erebus become husband and wife, thus making Chaos irrelevant and causing him to disappear from the story entirely. So, Erebus and Nyx get down to banging like the hot young divinities that they are, and now pop two new divinities, Aether and Hermera. Don't worry too much about them, they also aren't really important, and they disappear almost immediately. Now, Aether and Hermera become husband and wife, and they start getting down to banging like the hot young divinities that they are. However, unlike their parents, they have more than two kids this time. They actually have four! Take that, mom and dad! Anyway, these four are Gaia, Tartarus, Pontus, and Eros, and honestly, most versions that aren't the Hesiod version just start here as the creation of the universe, because everything that's happened before this point really doesn't matter for the future. Now, Tartarus is the underworld, sorry Erebus, you just got replaced. Pontus is the water and looks really bizarre. And Eros is love, except he has a very confusing backstory and may also be somebody else's kid who hasn't been created yet, and we're not getting into that nonsense in this video. Finally, there's Gaia, who is the Earth itself, and unlike the others, she's actually the first important character who comes up again. Now, Gaia is different than all of the others because she goes, you know what, I want a mate who's not my sibling, and so she has Uranus, the sky. Gaia and Uranus, mother and son, now get down to bang and like the hot young divinities that they are. And Gaia, unlike her parents, has 12 kids. Take that, mom and dad. Now, I'm not going to actually list them all because most of them aren't important, and they don't really come up in the story again, so don't worry about them. Beyond the 12 Titans, Uranus and Gaia have six sort of malformed kids, proving that incest is bad even when you're a divinity. And the theme of this set is sixes, because like the six male titans and six female titans, there are six quote-unquote malformed failures. There are the three cyclopses, who are all one-eyed monsters, and they are the lightning, the thunderclouds, and the lightning bolt itself, which I'm not sure how is different, but it is, so just go with it. There's also the three Hecunton Kyries, I think that's how you pronounce it, they have a really unpronounceable Greek name. It's irrelevant, though. You'll remember them because they have 100 arms and 50 heads each, and their giant look like trees of malformed limbs. Now, in the beginning of a trend, Uranus looks upon his children, decides they're all ugly and hideous, and he doesn't really want them anymore. So he shoves them back into Gaia to try to make them go away. As you can imagine, this is not how you parent your children and doesn't actually make them go away. Gaia, pretty reasonably, is actually kind of pissed off that Uranus has shoved all of her children back into her in an attempt to make them go away. She's also pretty unhappy because Uranus is like, have dick, must put it in things. So, like the deadbeat dad that he is, Uranus spends all of his time ignoring his children and forcing himself on his wife, which is a big no-no because she's also his mom. After a while, Guy decides that, you know what, it's time to actually parent my son, who is also my husband. And like any terrible mother, she decides that rather than do it herself, she's going to have her other kids do it. Because why actually be a parent when you can have the kids parent each other for you? However, it's not enough to just make Uranus stop having sex with her. He needs to be punished, and clearly the only way to punish him is to castrate him. So Gaia creates a sickle inside of herself and then goes to her children and says, Hey kids, which one of you wants to castrate your sibling dad? And all the Titans are like, uh, yeah, no, he's kind of scary and stuff, and also he's the sky and his junk is very big. However, the youngest of the Titans, Kronos, is like, you know what? Yeah, I'll totally castrate my dad. What's the worst thing he can do? Shove me back in here? 
So Gaia hides Cronus again and waits for him to come back so they can bang like the hot young divinities that they are. Only this time, Cronus jumps out and cuts off his dad's junk. And Uranus is really sad because he no longer has a dick and thus can no longer stick it in things. Cronus, now in possession of his dad's junk like it's the worst Zelda item of all time, tosses it into the sea, which is either his uncle or one of his siblings. It's not really clear which. Either way, it's a little gross. Now, the blood from Uranus' junk is super potent, and every bit of blood that drops on the ground creates something new. So, for example, there are the Furies, who are all angry and stuff and spend most of their time in mythology punishing people. There's also Giants, who are giant and stuff, and there are nymphs, which are sexy and stuff, and apparently there's also demigods, and we're not really going into it, because while Hesiod spends a lot of time naming them all, he names every plant, tree, and vine that exists in all of mythology, and we're not going to be here all day. Now, as we said, Uranus has no dick, and because he has no dick, he can no longer rule the universe, so he just kind of sits in the sky pouting for the rest of eternity. Sorry, Uranus, your dick privileges have been revoked. Now, Having done the great deed of castrating his own father, Kronos takes rulership of the universe. And his first act, upon ascending the throne, is to shove his malformed brothers back into his mother. He then decides to pair off with his sister Rhea, and they get down to banging like the hot young divinities that they are. Because you see, Kronos has dick, and he must put it in things. Now, Kronos and Rhea have six kids, and you're probably going to recognize them. They are... Hestia, Hades, Demeter, Hera, Poseidon, and Zeus. Pay attention to the last one, he's going to be important. Now, Cronus looks upon his kids and goes, Wait, child support? Being an emotionally supportive father? No way, man, I'm out. And he tries to get rid of them the same way that his father did, only it's unclear if he tried to shove his babies back into Rhea, but she's not Gaia, so this doesn't work. Instead, he goes with plan B. Cannibalism. Turns out, much like his father, Cronus doesn't really know anything about tact, and he waits all of, like, three seconds to consume them once they pop out of Rhea, like they're donuts out of an oven. As you might imagine, eating her kids right in front of her makes Rhea very unhappy, and so she hatches a plan to ensure that the next one doesn't get eaten. Now, Rhea is smarter than her husband, Cronus, and so this time, when she has Zeus, she tells him, hey, wait outside the door for a few seconds, at which point she takes a rock, wraps it in a blanket, and hands it to him. Kronos, being dumb as said rock, consumes it without a second thought and pays no attention to the fact that it tastes like a rock. Zeus, obviously, is not dead, and he's ferried off to the island of Crete, where he comes of age, where he's also surrounded by soldiers who spend their time shaking, you know, spears and things, to cover up the fact that he's crying. Now, skip ahead a few decades, because nothing important happens. Zeus is now a young man, and he's kind of angry that all of his siblings are still in his father, and is actually kind of angry that his father was going to eat him, so he decides that it's time to do something about it. Zeus, however, realizes that taking away his father's junk-having privileges doesn't do anything to actually, you know, free his siblings, so he comes up with a different plan. He's going to poison Kronos to make him throw up all of his siblings. So Zeus crafts a potion, which is actually poison, and then gives it to his father, in secret, so that his father will throw up his siblings, which he does. There's just one problem. There's only six gods, and there are 12 titans, which aren't really good odds when you're trying to overthrow your father and take over the cosmos. So Zeus spends a second and thinks and realizes, hey, I know where we can get six other people, and he frees his malformed uncles. So the giants and 50-headed guys are like, wow, thanks for letting us out of your grandmother. Here's a lightning bolt. Let's go kick your dad's ass and stuff. And so the gods and the incest kids fight the titans in a giant clash. They win, take over the universe, and lock the titans away. Zeus then marries his sister Hera, and they get down to business, banging like the hot young divinities that they are. And then Zeus runs off to have more adventures, where he sticks his dick in lots of things as lots of things, because you see, Zeus has a dick, and he must stick it in things. And that's the story of how the universe came to be, according to the Greeks.